We're live at the CBGB set in Manhattan over at the YouTube space. I'm Anthony Vincent. I'm the voice of 10 Second Songs. We're joined here with Papa Roach. Their new album, Fear, will be released on January 27th. And we're going to get into a little bit of a Q&A, but first we're going to do an exclusive acoustic performance from the guys. Take it away. Yeah, here we are right now. We're going to play you guys uh, this track right here. This kind of changed the course of our career, changed our, changed our writing as well as a band too, the way we approach music. So this one's called Scars. I tear my heart open, I sew myself shut My weakness is that I care too much And my scars remind me that the past is real I tear my heart open just to fail I'm drunk and I'm feeling down And I just want to be alone could you came around why don't you just go home cause the channel on your pain and I can't help you fix yourself you're making me insane all I can say is I tear my heart open I sew myself shut my weakness is that I care too much and our scars remind is real I tear my heart open just to fail I tried to help you once against my own advice I saw you going down but you never realized that you're drowning in the water so I offered you my hand compassion's in my nature Tonight is our last stand I tear my heart open I sew myself shut My weakness is That I care too much And our scars remind us That the past is real I tear my heart open Just to fail I cannot fix yourself but at least I could say I tried I'm sorry but I gotta move on with my own life I can't help it fix yourself But at least I could say I tried I'm sorry but I gotta move on with my own life I tear my heart open I sew myself shut And my weakness is that I care too much And my scars remind me That the past is real I tear my heart open Just to fail I tear my heart open I sew myself shut And my weakness is That I care too much And our scars remind us is real. I tear my heart open just to fail. Oh, yeah. yeah. Awesome, man. Guys, that was awesome. Thank you very much, man. You're great. awesome. Thank you. Thanks, you man. You rock, dude. I, I appreciate just, that. I'm like, man, your voice is off the chain. I was watching some of those videos you do on YouTube, and I'm just like, well, I, yes. I, I appreciate that. The Michael man. Jackson one is, is my favorite. I've, we're going to get into a little bit of a Q&A right now from yep. uh, Twitter and Facebook. I'm going to ask the first question. So yes. talk about the process of this album a little bit. You know, does anyone contribute lyrics? Like, just break it down just for us to know. It's always music first uh, and then lyrics and vocals. Okay. Uh, this time was a little different because we didn't really have any material going into the record. Normally we like to write and then record. The whole situation was different too, the way they work there. Uh, there's really no, there was a place to jam, but they didn't really allow us to do it. So we kind of had to write at the house that we all lived in. And then once we got the first song done, which was Broken As Me, yeah. we immediately heard it because they kind of mixed it as we went. So we got to hear pretty much 90% of the finished, what it would sound like as a finished product. So immediately we were, our, our, 
our worries were put to rest. It's like Tobin is like a whirlwind of riffs and ideas. <laughs> and it's like sometimes you got to stand around and just catch them and go, that yeah. one's good, that one's great, that yeah. one's awesome. You know, and like me and Jerry are very more like, we sit back and reflect on the music and we're more calculated about it, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's, it's interesting how our approach is different, <laughs> but it, it makes us us, you know? It's cool, man. It's the process. All right, so the next question is from Chris Jr. Anderson. Was Face Everything and Rise inspired by uh, specific events, and if so, what events and how? Pretty much in the process of the record, I think it was about three quarters of the way through, I just started to feel like that overall theme in the record. And uh, when I came in, in the very beginning of the record, I had all these big old sheets of paper hung on the walls so I could write a bunch of ideas on them. And uh, the only thing I wrote on the paper was Face Everything and Rise. And I just felt like, there was a home for that idea. This record, the way I approached it was, if this was my last record, as a singer, as a songwriter, what would I say? What's my purpose? You know, what's what's the theme? And I think it it uh, it's inspiring. There's hope in it. In a world as crazy as it is now, and as much fear that gets thrown at people, and as much brokenness is, that is out there. Like, we want to be an outlet of some hope. And so that title really stirred that emotion in me. And uh, eventually we found a song that fit rhythmically for Face Everything and Rise. Because I was like, every song the guys wrote, I'm like, I'm trying to find fit the lyrics Face Everything and Rise to. And so finally, when the music for that one came around, it just, it was like, oh, finally, it's here. It arrived. So Casey uh, Leslie Elliott, she asked, we know that you've been sober for a few years now, which is great. Congrats. Are there any words of advice you can give to someone who is battling addiction? Anybody that's battling addiction, man, that's, that's a tough one, man, because, you know, somebody could give me advice back in the day and I just wasn't one to listen. I had to just kind of plummet to the bottom a few times my own, in my own way and fail my own way. But, you know, it's like if you're in the thick of it and you're hurting and you're in pain, it's like reach out to a friend. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Essentially what it is is your bottom is where you make your bottom. So you don't have to go all the way down, you know what I'm saying? So it's pull the plug, you know what I'm saying? Save yourself. We have a question from uh, Ashley <laughs> Jensen over here. So I was wondering if you guys had any solid plans to do a 15th anniversary tour for Infest. We have plans, how solid they are. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much we're just gonna leave it at that. You know, we, we definitely want to do something to honor that record, but there's nothing solidified that's like, this is gonna be the day when we're gonna play Infest or, do that, but I mean, in my idea, it'd just be cool to pop up here mm -hmm. and there and just not tell people and just, yeah. oh, surprise concert. Look, we're gonna play this in its entirety. Okay, so we got another question from, uh, from Kira Lee. Did there ever come, up, come, to a, uh, come a point in your lives where making music had to come as a second priority? Uh, and if so, what had to be put first? In the beginning, we yeah. were, you know, we had to have day jobs. We had a band fund that we would put <laughs> money in from t-shirts or CDs that we sold yeah, but that, that just went, got us gas that money. went right back into the gas yeah. or the equipment or the recordings or anything like that so you had the worst day job I was a roofer for a little while which um, I don't really ever want to do that again I was uh, a janitor at a hospital that yeah. was a terrible job for me about well two years ago exactly uh, we were on tour and my wife was pregnant and I was like there was the possibility of her going into labor you know, while we were on tour. So I, luckily my brother was out on tour with us teching and I was like, you better learn oh, these yeah. bass lines because there's a possibility <laughs> I'm gonna have to, fly I'm gonna have to have jump a on an airplane. Yeah. You know, it didn't happen, but sometimes you have to make that call. <laughs>